Every month I'm making a new tabletop role-playing game adventure zine over on my Patreon. I've probably mentioned it a hundred times in these videos before, but I thought it would be fun to actually show you what these zines are all about. So what the heck is a Patreon and why do I mention it in every video? It's basically a site that allows you to support a creator like me or many others with a monthly subscription and in return you get a bunch of cool rewards. So supporting me on Patreon helps me create these monthly adventure zines. Of course, the first link down in the description will take you to my Patreon page where you can check it all out. I've got three different tiers of support. The first one is just a general support tier for $3 a month. You'll get access to my Discord server where a bunch of awesome people have come together and we talk about making maps and playing role-playing games. And there's a surprising amount of really awesome discussion going on there, as well as resource sharing and feedback. And I'm, I'm loving this Patreon Discord server. You also get an archive of the live streams I do here on YouTube. So if you miss a live stream, you can go back and watch it. And you also get a discount for my online shop, which is also linked down in the description. If there's a bunch of stuff you wanna get from my online shop uh, and want a little discount, it's a little counterintuitive to sign up for something else, but sign up for a month of the support Patreon tier and you'll get a discount in my shop. Cool. <laughs> the second tier is the digital support tier. So for six bucks a month, you get a PDF version of the monthly adventure and all the past adventures too, plus any extras like maps or printable miniatures, stuff like that, that comes with the adventures. And then for $12 a month, you get the actual printed adventure mailed to you. The $12 includes shipping even for international patrons. And when I set this whole thing up, I knew if people were supporting me with their money, I had to have a way to send them something real that they could hold every month. And these zines are the result of people supporting me on Patreon. Okay, so now that you've suffered through my long-winded explanation of how Patreon works, let's take a look at the actual zines and what you'll be getting in the mail every month. So these are the first three zines that I have released on the Patreon. They have everything a dungeon master or game master would need to run these adventures. They work great as one-shots, or you can also string them together into one big story. These sort of act as a continuation to the Flick Silverpin's Guide to Dragontown, the Zine Quest Kickstarter that I did last year. If you get all of these zines, plus the ones that come after, it'll all combine into a big, huge campaign length adventure that culminates in battling a huge world destroying evil villain at the end. So let's take a look at the actual zines themselves and what you get each month. So this is Flick Silverpin's Guide to the Shadespear Mountains. It is a point crawl adventure through this sort of dangerous mountain range that is north of Dragontown. So each of these zines start out with some backstory, kind of like a summary of what the adventure is all about. Some notes to help you run the game. There's always adventure hooks in case you want to run this as a one shot. And then it just jumps into story stuff. So for this adventure, there are three major factions. There are the Shadespear Orcs, which are a, a group of orcs that patrol the mountains on the back of griffins. There are the Talathon, which are these rock creatures that have been in the Shadespear Mountains longer than anyone. And then there are the Ravenwood Brigands, which are a group of elves that have invaded the mountains and are causing a bunch of trouble. I have a list of names here, so I try to make these zines as helpful and as easy to run as possible. So anywhere I can put in like some names or some random tables, which actually here are a bunch of random encounters that your uh, players can come across as they're traveling from point to point in the mountains. There's stuff like a shadow cat or a wind spirit encounter. There's always a uh, sort of eerie floating eye that follows the players around in all of these adventures. I also put in a little system for determining weather and how that creates problems while traveling in the mountains. And then we get to a list of all of the points that correspond to each 
area that the players can travel to. So they start in the southern entry and then can move to the old tower or the narrow pass and so on all the way through this mountain range. And like I said, I tried to make this as easy to run from this book as possible. So for example, at this old tower, there's these two crow birds that will heckle the adventurers and kind of give them a little bit of information about what's going on. There's dangerous stuff like skeletons and giant snakes. I try to include cool maps and as many illustrations as I possibly can. So this is the orc city that uh, is only accessible by flying on the backs of griffins. You can meet up with the rock creatures and help them decide with how they want to handle the Ravenwood brigands. You can get help from uh, a little hermit dude named Vernard. And also at the end of the point crawl is a sort of dungeon and a culmination of everything that's going on in this adventure with the, the orcs and the elves. I've mentioned it in past videos and really I just like to pick themes from typical fantasy D&D type stuff and play with them. So this adventure is really a play on the elves versus orc trope and how I can flip that around, make it fun and interesting and feel like Dungeons and Dragons or, you know, the typical epic fantasy quest type stuff, but also unexpected and and new. So yeah, even if you don't plan on running these adventures, hopefully they're filled with enough interesting stuff that will inspire your own games. There's lots of magic items and fun creatures that you'll be able to throw into your own games as well. Next up is Flick Silverpin's Guide to the Plum Wax Kobolds. I just love these little dragon dudes so much. They're, they're basically like little dragon goblins. And this zine is all about going underground and trying to survive this chaotic cave system that they have built. So again, kind of a similar layout. There's an introduction, what this adventure is all about, a little bit of helpful information for how to run this adventure, got adventure hooks. And actually I should say with this one, you can run the adventure through this map, but there's also a mechanic in here for creating a completely randomized chaotic cobalt layer. So the plum wax cobalts, there's a bunch of information about them, how they react to invaders or intruders in their layer, a bunch of names. I sort of thought of these cobalts as sort of like a, a wacky group of builders and strange fantastic engineers and workers. So they have these chants that they burst into as they're working and coming up with stuff. I guess another thing I really like to include in these zines are just ways for the dungeon master or game master to have fun at the table too. You know, really I approach these things like fun adventures that the players can go on and experience, but I also want the, the dungeon master to have fun. And so part of that is, you know, coming up with stuff like these chants or a bunch of cobalt weapons that will surprise the players, stuff like a sack full of spiders or a centipede flail. You know, a centipede flail is just a cobalt trying to use a giant centipede as a weapon. How that's going is is up to you, Dungeon Master. So it wouldn't be a cobalt layer without a ton of traps. So there's a whole page with different traps the players can run into. And then we get into exploring the layer. So this is the different mechanic for how to randomly generate this dungeon. And then a list of all of the rooms that can be experienced as you traverse this dangerous system of caves. So because this is a place that the kobolds live, they have to have things like the farm with different plants that they grow underground. There's fun NPCs that you get to play as the DM that sort of test the players, but also help them with information and, and ways of getting out of this crazy place. So the Waxworks has the Wick Warden that has a quest about finding their pair of missing scissors, and then there's enemies like the Nif, the giant stinky cloud that the kobolds have captured and are trying to not have it let loose in their, their lair and destroy everything. The kobolds use these creatures called deep aggers that are like giant moles to help them dig tunnels. They have a dump and 
a crystal cavern, and then there's a, a dwarven throne room, which uh, sort of leads into the next adventure, but also kind of tells this story about what happened here before the kobolds. There's a cool magic item axe and a bunch of other crazy characters, the centipede farm, the boom room with Doc, who, you know, is a, an expert at making the kobold traps. And then there is Overlord Odo, the giant dragon skeleton that all the kobolds worship. And yeah, one cool thing that I should mention is that every month the zines come with uh, one, some sort of extra. So when the Plum Wax Cobalt zine came out on Patreon, all of the, the patrons get these, these printed out paper miniatures that they can assemble. So not only did they get the zine, but they also got an army of cobalt paper miniatures, you know, the NIF and the Deep Agar, whole bunch of fun stuff. As of the recording of this video, the first two zines are available in my online shop for people who miss them. It's important to note that if you're buying the zines from the online shop, they don't come with the Patreon exclusive extras like the map and the miniatures, and you will have to pay for shipping. So if you really want the best deal, it is good to sign up for the Patreon and get them shipped to you every month instead of waiting for them to show up in the online shop. And then we have Flick Silverpin's Guide to the City of Eternal Night. So this adventure is actually like three different areas all combined. So just like before, it's got the, you know, sort of summary, some helpful information, adventure hooks, and then you jump right into the Netherhold dungeon. So like I said, each zine works great as a one shot, but you can continue them. So you can start in the Shadespear Mountains and then travel underground through the Plum Wax Cobalt's Lair and then into the ruined halls of the Netherhold and throughout the rest of this adventure. So for this zine, I really liked the idea that I started in the Plum Wax Cobalt's about the ruined ancient dwarven civilization that lives under the Shadespear Mountains. And so I kind of continued that in this section, uh, the Netherhold section. So there's seven rooms of more locks and some more interesting magic items. You know, it's a, it's a combination of enough scary adventure type things with some rewards like Vindari's horn that helps boost you and your friend's defensive abilities. Also mixed together with some fun story elements. So if your players can make it through the ruined halls of Netherhold, they come to the city of Eternal Night. It's a city filled with these bat folk that worship darkness, but it's not exactly clear to the players. So this scene is actually just one big trick that you as a dungeon master get to play on your players. So it's a little bit of a balancing act of you know, slowly revealing information as your players explore. There's a bunch of backstory about these bat cultists and how their city works. A few of the characters you'll meet and more magic items. There's a store called Practical Goods that has a bunch of magic items that are really only useful to these bat cultists because uh, not that many people are exploring underground, but they are a group of bat cultists, so they are happy to see you. So happy, in fact, that they'll basically trade anything in their shop for whatever the players decide it's worth it. If the players really need a wing repair kit or a pair of extra ears that help them hear better, uh, you know, they can basically get it for free. <laughs> Some more info about the city. There is uh, an inn that is very friendly, but not the most comfortable. There's stuff about what the bats eat and then the problem that they are having with their temple. So that leads to the final part, the Penumbra Temple, where the players will discover what's going on, stuff is, is really starting to go wrong in the city of Eternal Night with these Morlocks and then these Paladin jerks that are, are there. It's in the temple that your players will discover the Penumbracon, and really it makes clear that these bat people are worshiping darkness and maybe should not be trusted. And of course, most adventures should end with a big boss battle with a giant Morlock and then some sabotage, treachery type stuff that leads into the next adventure. And then we got the little peeking Morlock on the back of the zine. Yeah, 
Flick Silverpin's Guide to the City of Eternal Night. So I have tons of awesome plans for new zines that are coming out. If you sign up this month, January 2022, you'll get Flick Silverpin's Guide to the Red Growth. It's an adventure through a sort of infected or corrupted mushroom person underground city. Lots of crazy stuff going on, tons of fun characters. There's a little worm called Nugget. It's gonna be awesome. <laughs> So I know that this was really just a big advertisement for my Patreon, but I really hope that getting a look inside of these zines was inspiring in some way or maybe got you thinking about creating your own adventures. I put a lot of work into these books every month and I'm really proud and I'm really, really appreciative of all the people that support me on Patreon. And if any of this sounds cool, I really hope you check it out. Again, it's the first link down in the description. Thank you so, so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. See ya!